Hi there, it's Sarah of Get Weaving. I'm calling this short video, Help! <laughs> what clothing can I make from my very small loom? I've made scarves, I've made things for the house, but I'd like to make some clothing and I only have a very small loom. So what could I do? Now I had a little loom when I was 10. It was this. It's the Weave Master, made in London. Mine was 12 inches. Well, I'm saying was, I still have it. And I finished the weaving that was on there and then probably made things for my doll's house. Um, I do still use it occasionally. It's a replica of a real loom. And somebody told me the other day that they were made by servicemen coming back from the Second World War. Unfortunately, Weave Master are no longer in existence. They did a fantastic range of looms. I was looking through the brochure the other day. Very interesting. This is one of the very popular ones. So this is for people who are in bed for some reason. A lot probably used for occupational therapy. Really good though. Sturdy, easy to use. One day I'll pass mine on to one of the grandchildren, but I'm not quite ready to do that yet. So in the 1970s, I was looking at teacher training colleges and in those days I had to send off for a syllabus. And I came across this one called Balls Park in Hertfordshire. Absolutely beautiful. And inside in the curriculum, they had spinning and weaving. And I thought, gosh, how wonderful. I could actually weave my own fabric. As I said, my mum did a lot of dressmaking and I was used to using fabrics and I was allowed to use her sewing machine if I was very careful. And the thought of being able to weave my own fabric was so exciting. Now, this college had the most beautiful grounds, um, lovely trees that had been imported from all over the world, I think. And I loved doing a bit of photography. So um, I would go around with my camera, take photographs of <laughs> garden walls. And my first weaving was probably on a, a frame. So that was that little tapestry and to go with it because I like printmaking um I did this lino print I ought to put this in a frame at some point I haven't got round to it so all these lovely colours the house was built in the 1600s and there was a lake there and I used to spend all my time just going around taking photographs of things and because I was taught um, to spin and weave by the same person pretty much I've always done them together so my favorite is to have probably a commercial warp for speed and hand spun weft so that's where the journey started uh, like most people I was taught to spin on an Ashford traditional wheel. So um, <laughs> this is me <laughs> sitting on my bed spinning. Very easy to learn on and came as a kit, which was just so clever. So I learned to spin on Jacob fleece, which I still love, use it a great deal. And it was really funny when I got to college, I said, I'm here for the spinning and weaving. And my tutor said, oh, we haven't done that for years. Nobody was bothered. We do embroidery now. <laughs> I was mortified. Anyway, we went and found this room full of dryad equipment. Now, dryad's brilliant because it, it was used for schools and all comes apart and all the pieces have numbers punched in them. So the equipment's really easy to put back together again. And we got looms out and a few more people were interested. I think in the end there were about eight of us weaving and we were in a wonderful outside building with painters 
and we could stay there till 10 o'clock at night and we had such a good time there just weaving and looking at colors and spinning and it was a lovely lovely college to be and at some point or another i think it must have been in the library i came across this book called cut my coat and then i found a copy to buy heaven above knows how i found it then but never mind and in here there was very very simple clothing and the one that appealed to me was this one a very simple jacket made with very narrow fabric nine inches wide 23 centimeters no waist simple shapes rectangles and because i had a lot of yarn left from that tapestry that i'd woven i made myself a jacket on a four shaft dryad table loom and my tutor sat one side of it and i sat the other and we threaded it up and that's how i always think of threading a loom up when people say oh i hate that bit i think we'll get a friend to help so we sat and counted and that's my memory of my first piece of woven clothing um it was 13 ends to the inch quite fine and i was really happy with it i still have it it's a bit itchy because it's not really the sort of yarn <laughs> you use for clothing it's um singles wool bit itchy but anyway i've still got it so after i left teacher training college i was teaching in a secondary school so that's 11 to 18 year olds mainly art some textiles to the older ones and that was for a few years until i had my children when i came out of full-time teaching and started a course at the local adult education center in spinning and weaving now they hadn't had this before so they didn't have any equipment so the people who signed up came along with a massive assortment of <laughs> old looms grandmas something out the attic charity shops lots of homemade ones amazing what you can do with an orange box and some bits of wood um and these sorts of things i have no idea what make this is but we did have several of these brilliant mm, 18 inches wide something like that the fabric we had great fun there was an evening class and a morning class and two of my very closest friends elizabeth and jill i met there and we have kept in touch for all these years obviously and had just a great time so each week we'd have a slightly different theme if somebody wanted to learn how to set up a four shaft loom or do some spinning um, or a bit of dyeing we did with kitchen waste we did all sorts of things there and all the people that came along were very accomplished at either painting or dressmaking or machine knitting or hand knitting or embroidery so they were very comfortable using color and materials and were just really keen a lot of them were very good sewers as well so they wanted to make clothing i remember the first week one lady came in and said i'd like to weave a coach and i'm like have you done any weaving before nope she did. She made her coat. It was so exciting. <laughs> now, in those days, most of the looms came with a, a rigid heddle, um, a bit like this one. Now, this is 13 to the inch. They were called metlics. Fine if you've got very fine yarns. But because we didn't have any purposeful weaving shops um, anywhere nearby, we were using a lot of knitting yarns and also hand spinning. So those very fine metal heddles weren't really much use 
And so <laughs> we started to make our own. So these are from Lolly Sticks. They're really good. That one's about oh three to the inch, I think, something like that. Or and if you cut your lolly sticks in half, you get a finer one. And these worked. I mean, these are nearly 40 years old and they still work. I was just so excited because they were so enthusiastic. So whatever they wanted to do, we did. Spent a lot of time in the hardware store buying bits and pieces. Uh, it was great. Youngest student was all oh, 19, I think. She built herself a spinning wheel from an old bicycle um, from a do-it-yourself book. And it worked. Um, our, probably our most senior student was in her 80s. And she was wonderful. She'd been to art college in New York in the 1920s. And she knew exactly what she wanted to make. She used a lot of black and very bright colours. That was wonderful. And they were game to have a go at anything. Now, we're talking narrow fabrics here. Anything between maybe nine inches wide and 19 inches wide. What can you do with your narrow fabrics? Obviously, you've got to have seams. So very early on, rather than trying to hide the seams, we were generally making a feature of them by adding some knitting or some crochet or some fabric or some binding. Um, because trying to hide a seam, particularly in the centre front down here, can be a bit tricky, especially if your stripes don't quite match. We used to have um, an exhibition every year and the judges were very harsh. And although we weren't doing it to win any prizes it wasn't for that obviously they wanted things to look as nice as they could because again it might encourage somebody else to have a go so we had good fun anyway So also each year, the college put on a fashion show. So the machine knitters would show what they'd been making and the dressmakers and of course our class as well. And people were amazed. They thought we had really complicated looms. They remembered perhaps weaving from school. And we had to say, no, nope, these are very simple table looms. You just have to be a bit creative with uh, how you put your panels together. Um, one of the looms that we had in those days was one of these, which is a Spears loom. Now, this is the size four, which is a nice size. Um, you can actually weave a decent piece of fabric on that. And I wove quite a lot of things on that. This is one of my first tops. So it's got fabric, yoke and sides. And then it has um, a rigid heddle woven band at the bottom. And this is just using yarn from the local knitting store because we didn't have stores around here that sold yarn for weavers weaving had really very much gone out of fashion in the united kingdom in the 1970s if you said you were a weaver people thought either rugs or ponchos <laughs> that's about as far as it got when we said no we i'm you know i'm wearing what i've woven um and they'd look a bit confused sometimes but um there were so many beautiful yarns around in the um, knitting shops and a lot of the students were hand spinning their own wefts as well so they could have the colours that they wanted. We obviously discovered acid dyes. Um, I probably um, had some things <laughs> boiling up in the hall and we just experimented I think because we didn't know anything at that time. I was just a bit of a technician. So each week we'd try something different. We did tablet weaving and braids, all sorts of things. It was uh, great fun. So because we were being asked where we got our patterns from, we were saying, well, 
and we have to make them up. You can't buy patterns for these narrow fabrics. They're mainly squares and rectangles, perhaps with gussets. Maybe we've added bits of crochet or knitting for a, a bit of shaping. Um, but yeah, we make them up from simple shapes. So uh, we borrowed the garments and we borrowed a camera. I think it was a Hasselblad. And in those days, we took slides because they would reproduce better than photographs. And we found a printer and we put together our first book. That's this one called Simply Woven. That's my niece on the front. <laughs> and there's the two of us, me and my pal Elizabeth on the back. Haven't changed, have we? <laughs> and in May in 1986, we went round Elizabeth's garden, armed with all the garments that we borrowed from the class and um, props, beads, hats, had great fun. So this time of year, with the hawthorn and the cow parsley out, I remember that, it was a very happy day. And we took photographs of all the garments. We took uh, lots of photographs. We needed to do a few extras later on as well. So we asked uh, the daughter of a friend of Elizabeth to help us out. And we had our book printed in Suffolk. Uh, we had 500 printed and then we went around to different guilds giving talks. We would take garments and looms all set up and give demonstrations. And there was a lot of enthusiasm, although it was still early days. Most people were still saying, well, I have a loom and it takes me four days to set it up. And they still found it very hard to believe that you could actually make clothing on these small looms. <laughs> So now, up to date, it's 2023, and I'm still weaving on small looms. That's what this is all about. Really, things haven't changed much. In fact, they've almost come full circle. Um, I like small looms. They're easy to set up. They're not too cumbersome. I can take them out with me. I can set them up in the garden. I don't need a separate room on my own. I do have floor looms. Um, but if I want to set something up quite fast, which is <laughs> which is my usual way of working, I get an idea and I have to get on with it. I'll always go to the rigid heddle loom, especially with all the beautiful yarns you can get nowadays. So these are two pieces I've just finished. Um, this has a cotton warp, um, odds and ends from our sales table at the Guild. And the weft is hand spun rami uh, from a store called Hilltop Cloud. Absolutely beautiful colours. Um, plied the weft, so it's a nice balanced weave. That's for a summer top. And then other end of the scale, this has, I'll just take the label off, um, a really mixed warp. Lovely ribbon yarns, fine yarns, twisted together, wool, all sorts of things. So this has come up 12 and a half inches wide, and this is for a jacket. Uh, it's 164 inches long, so it's going to be one of my patterns, JA003 probably. So it was washed in the washing machine, probably 20 degrees wool wash, short spin, dried on the line. And it's ready to be cut out now. So that will be for next winter. And I like... Being able to use what I've got, I do try to not buy any more yarns at the moment, <laughs> but I do buy fibres because I do like spinning the weft. So as I say, I've almost come full circle. This top behind me was woven on my 12 inch Ashford knitters loom. It's really comfortable. So again, it's too narrow width width <laughs> stitched together i did it so that the warp one runs um horizontally and the weft is the the colored stripey bits and i didn't want the stripes to match at all so the stripes are regular same order color 
and um, but I deliberately want didn't want to try and make the stripes match if it because it's if it's not perfect it looks awful and it's so comfortable I've put it over a shirt um I have a piece of shirt fabric that I wove a few years ago and I haven't cut it up yet so I'm going to make this to go underneath a fairly long shirt with a collar and I am going to go back through all my notes and I'm going to put proper buttonholes in it <laughs> there I've said it now I can't get away from it so I'm so pleased with this I've just set the loom up again so it's this on it now so you can see the warp is all different mixed cottons charity shops most of them some of them don't have labels on uh, the weft is stripy a big wide stripe so again it'll be made up this way around with the weft stripes going up and down the weft um, are these lovely ribbon yarns, tape yarns, very nice. I get these off eBay, five or six balls, so there's usually enough to make something. Slightly stretchy, bit of give to it. That's the only thing, if I'm mixing the yarns, I will make sure that the stretch is very similar. Otherwise, you're going to end up with <laughs> a slightly wobbly piece of fabric. Um, and of course, I've done that, so that's how I know. So... This is going to be for the summer, this version. This is a woolly one, although I actually wore it the other day because it's been quite chilly here. And the cotton version is going to be for the summer. And what I'm going to do with the seam that goes across between the two pieces, I'm going to stitch them together, just a very, very narrow overlap so I don't lose too much. And then I'm going to put big woolly or cotton or something um, cross stitch across the seam to make something of it. The only bit that's actually cut away is the neckline. And then it's got um, a homemade bias tape around it. So it's very simple. There's no armhole shaping. It's just stitched from under the armhole to the hem. There's no hem on it because the selvage is the bottom edge. So there's so little wastage. So... It's basically to say, yes, you can make clothing, even if you've only got a small loom. You just need to be a bit creative with your seams. Uh, and that's half the fun of it, because who wants to end up with something that looks like what somebody else has? You want to be able to use your own ideas and your own colours. And instead of just copying the same thing over and over again, each time you can make it slightly different. And that's where the fun comes in. One of the first patterns that I made because I would bought the 12 inch Ashford Knitters Loom was for this dress. It has centre front, centre back panels, two side panels and godets. So if you can see the layout there, again, there's no wastage at all, none. Tiny little bits around the armhole and the neckline. So I've made this tops. Uh, I'm going to use the same pattern for a skirt at some point or another as well. So the fabric, depending on what size you are, the pattern goes from small to extra large. is seven and a half inches wide or nine and three quarter inches wide. Um, the weft is a hand spun Shetland, so quite random stripes anyway. Then I made this one, which is VE001. That's lined. Quite a simple vest. Got um, buttons and loops across the front to do it up. Then this top here behind me is a, a version of this pattern here, but it's cut sideways. So I've done a new project sheet. That was the project sheet that I came up with. So you can see a uh, theme across the middle there. And the new version is this one here. So I'm trying to show you basically cut your fabric in half, you stitch the two bits together. You lay your pattern on sideways rather than lengthways, if that makes sense. So that's how that one is made. And I have also started sewing fabrics together to make a wider width before I cut it out. So this one here is a bias top. And if you can see the layout there, it's actually three widths stitched together. Because bias 
fabric um, has a nice bit of give to it so it meant that I could make a top that has some stretch to it so it could be slightly slightly not tighter but less loose if you like it's got nice shape to it so um, there are three different versions on the pattern and you can probably see from that center one making a feature of the seam with a bit of binding so that's what I've been doing lately because a lot of patterns particularly trousers or sleeves are very greedy in some parts and then less so in others if I put the narrow bits and the wider bits together um, so that they fit on next to each other there's very little wastage so <laughs> I spent quite a lot of time with bits of paper and scissors mucking about um, again though narrow fabrics stitched together very little wastage if you have sat and woven your fabric and maybe spun some of the yarn you just don't want to waste any of it at some point or another i'm going to do a video on what you can do with your off cuts apart from using them as samples but there's lots of little things you can make with them so anyway i hope this has been helpful um, today I'm wearing DR005. It's a dress. Um, I'll put a photo in a minute. It's got pockets. The sleeves and the band and the neckband are made of denim. I got a bit bored weaving all the same colour, so it's got these little smidges of cotton as it goes along. Again, uh, this is organic cotton on a cone, which I did buy to show, I think. Um, Yes, yeah, so again, I've made lots of different versions of this because it's so comfortable. Um, somebody asked me why I often wear layers. And essentially, it's because the weather here can change so quickly. It can be hot and sunny one minute, and then the wind changes direction, and it comes straight across the North Sea, and it's cold. So I, I tend to wear, you know, T-shirt or shirt, dress, jacket, whatever, waistcoat over the top, um, and then you can, you know, take them off as the day warms up. <laughs> or add more layers if it doesn't.